Happy hot news, everybody. Welcome back to the Monday episode of all the tech news that's going on in the world today. Number one, we got AMD's probably biggest launch in the last few years. Everything's shaping up to be pretty intense there. We've got the smallest Xbox ever made. The PS5 might have more support than you're thinking. And NVIDIA's mobile stuff, which let's round that out. After we talk about today's sponsor for hot news. Today's video, my friends, is brought to you by Linode. Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host anything in the cloud. Are you building your own website? Well, then Linode is a step up to totally customizable web hosting. If you're into gaming, you can host your own game servers with Linode's one-click apps. Easily set up Minecraft, CSGO, and other game servers to play with your friends. If you need a VPN, you can run one of those on your own Linode server to secure your connection and protect yourself on the internet. And if you really need some power, Linode also has GPU servers, perfect for machine learning and neural net use built with the powerful RTX 6000 GPUs. And UFD tech viewers will also get $100 in credit on new Linode accounts. You can check the link in the video description. Big thanks to Linode for sponsoring. Don't forget to check them out for your server needs, my friends. Let's go ahead and talk about the RX 6800 XT that's expected to be the GPU that's going to go right up against the RTX 3080. And we're getting more synthetic benchmarks that are hitting the airwaves. We're not getting real games just yet, just the synthetic. So the 6800 XT 3D Mark scores have hit the scene. And what we can see is that the scores across several different people who have gotten their own scores are actually remarkably consistent. So this likely will be what we should expect out of the 6800 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. But once we compare those numbers to the 3080 and the 2080 Ti, we find some interesting results. The 6800 XT appears to be worse than the 3080 at 1080p, but much better at 4K in certain scenarios. Fire Strike Extreme, the 6800 XT punches the 3080 in the face. Time Spy Extreme 4K, it's not as stark and then in ray tracing the 6800 xt is actually more akin to the 2080 ti than it is the 3080 but considering the fact that this is amd's first four way into hardware accelerated ray tracing it kind of makes sense that they would be equal to nvidia's first attempt at it as well so that's the main breakdown the 6800 xt looks to be better than the 3080 in certain environments the equal to the 2080 ti in certain environments and kind of just a solid card all around and you can see even in Fire Strike Extreme, the 6800 XT smashes the RTX 3090. So there's a lot of questions still to be answered on this. What is the price of the 6800 XT? And more importantly, how do these synthetic benchmarks translate into video games? Time Spy and Fire Strike are great at comparing, but we've seen this before. AMD is better at brute force computing, which synthetic benchmarks are really good at demonstrating. Does that actually equal game performance? We have to wait and see to find out. But while we're waiting, we're getting some more information on custom versions of the 6800 XT. The ROG Strix version apparently will have a boost beyond 2.5 gigahertz and come in at a total 290 watt TGP, which is less than the 30 series and actually isn't all that bad. You might not need to upgrade your power supply for AMD like you did for NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA hot and loud memes when? But while we're talking about NVIDIA, it appears that the RTX 3070 embargo will lift tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacific time, 9 a.m. Eastern, and then you can convert to wherever you are. The reviewer guide was actually leaked to video cards. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to find out about how NVIDIA is trying to get reviewers to talk about their card. But we also have some more information on the mobile version of the RTX 30 series. It appears that's going to be paired with Intel's 10th gen CPUs, which is just obviously massively disappointing. We can see that there is indeed an RTX 3060 that should be coming out, as well as Max-Q versions of the 3070 and the 3080 that should be happening. And in case you think pairing these GPUs with Intel isn't such a big deal, I want you to go check out our video from yesterday where I examined Dell's Tiger Lake laptop. Intel's 11th gen, which is not what this is, this is 10th gen. The 11th gen, which is on 10 nanometers, is just bad when it compares to mobile Ryzen. So I don't understand why they have to do this. Hopefully we'll see high-end GPUs with AMD CPUs at some point. Right now it's still just the 2060. Hopefully eventually, maybe sometime later this year, we're gonna see an AMD CPU or 
not later this year, this year's almost over. Oh no, we might see an AMD CPU with an RTX 3080 in the laptop environment. I would love that. Now let's talk about Team Blue for a second because there's some information coming out about their discrete graphics 2, which is supposed to be the follow up to DG1, which is kind of woefully unimpressive. The DG1, which we're expecting to go in the laptops, might not even be an MX350, which is just bad. The DG2, however, is apparently getting prepared in the labs. And according to certain rumors, which just take this with a massive heap of onions, the DG2 could have performance level of an RTX 3070. I'll believe it when I see it. Come on, rumor people. But while this next article is a rumor, it's actually from a more credible source. PS5 might actually have 1440p support and not just 1080p and 4K. This is coming out of BenQ, which they're talking about the fact that 1440p will be supported by the PS5 with high likelihood of 120 hertz in that resolution, which then makes it so that you don't need to buy a 4K 120 hertz TV in case you're trying to get this. You will if you want the size, but 4K 144 hertz monitors are the way to go. We have several reviews. I'll leave a link up there for one of our most recent on the ViewSonic Elite. You can check that out. Would highly recommend 1440p 144 hertz. It's like the sweet spot, both for PC gaming, but apparently also console gaming. And while we're talking about consoles, Microsoft's looking to the cloud to make that happen, as well as a TB stick that they would use for Project X Cloud Gaming. This is known as Project Hobart, which apparently was scrapped a little while ago, but it looks like it's being re ignited it actually just makes sense having something like a fire stick tv that can then run xbox one x quality of games is a genius idea very similar to how nvidia is doing things with their shields get geforce now on that it's just cloud streaming but having a small device that's dedicated to it is a genius idea what may not be a genius idea was pre-ordering one of eve's spectrum's hdmi 2.1 4k 144 hertz monitors because they are being delayed yet again until february 2021 they're saying that the scheduling update is happening because they're still working on finalizing a few things and then obviously coronavirus made things a little difficult but at the same time i was always cautious about telling people to pre-order a monitor just like this especially after the launch of their eve laptop or EV, I think it was called. It just, it had so many pre-order mistakes and I would rather wait until the Spectrum is on the market before purchasing rather than pre-ordering. In case you pre-ordered Apex Legends on EA Origins, you, it's on Steam November 4th. You didn't pre-order that game. That game just kind of got announced and launched. And speaking of getting announced and not launched, Hideo Kojima has confirmed that he's working on a new game. We have no idea what it is, just the fact that it's in active development at this point. There is some speculation that it could be Death Stranding 2. I highly doubt that. A lot of people are clamoring for Hideo Kojima to do a horror game similar to the PT trailer that got dropped on the PS4. People actually would want to see a full game from the brain of that man in the horror genre. Speaking of horror genre, let's go ahead and talk about the state of VR, specifically with the Oculus Quest 2. Apparently, deleting your Facebook account will make you lose ownership to the Oculus games that you purchase, which is now being noted here in the whole deleting account thing. So that means that if you purchased an Oculus Quest number one, had an Oculus account, upgrade to the Oculus Quest 2, transfer over the games that you bought when you didn't need a Facebook login, and then delete your Facebook account, you lose everything, which is just honestly ridiculous the fact that there's no standalone way for you to keep your stuff after you delete an account that is not tied to the hardware is in in in, in inane it's not insane i kind of like i expected us to get here but i i don't like the future that we're living in but while we're talking about Facebook and the Oculus, there's a uproar that happened recently where it was reported that if you had more than one Oculus Quest 2 connected to your Facebook account, they would actually end up banning you and therefore you couldn't actually use your accounts. Oculus has come out and said that this isn't true. This You can have multiple devices and they're actually working on streamlining things to make it happen. So don't necessarily trust that you will get banned for registering more than one headset to a Facebook account. But also don't trust Hornets Murder hornets finally been found in Washington state and they found the first nest. They they got it all vacuumed up. They they murdered the murder hornets. They murdered the murder hornets. Oh. They murdered the murder hornets. And now we can sleep peacefully at night knowing that they got the only one that they knew of. And speaking of knowing of things, you know of today's video sponsor, Linode. Did I film an outro for that, Catlin? Hopefully I did. If not, check out Linode in the video description. And that's going to wrap up this episode of Hot News. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, my friends.